Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, November 13th, and we'll see how things look for Thursday, November 14th. Well, it looked like it could be a positive day, but we ended up giving back all of the gains, and we were positive, but just barely. We were virtually unchanged on the day. We're seeing some things that are a bit of a concern to us. Some of the primary indicators that I look at have switched over negative, but we're still positive when we look at the short, intermediate, and long term, when you base that around moving averages. And I'll go through the charts and show you some of the concerns that we're seeing. But it's really looking like the market is exhausted right now. After the bingo run up last week, we haven't really seen much of a follow through into this week. Is this just a pause before we get set to go higher? We had probably the second biggest economic report of the month come out. The biggest one is the employment situation report. Then we had CPI, and that's big, and it came in as expected. And the market initially, before it opened, the futures jumped up, but then came right back down. We were pretty much flat right at the open. Then we tried to go higher, but then came back and ended pretty much where we started. So... We're not seeing an awful lot of conviction, not a lot of strength right now. There's a thing called the SPX Investing Program. It's a program I've developed. It's up, it's going, it's free until the end of 2024. There are additional videos that I post there, as well as making the videos immediately available right after they are recorded. There are links below the video in the description that will take you to a video that talks more about the program as well as to the website. You can also send me an email if you wanna talk about this. The daily video is also the real foundation of the analysis that I do. Even though I do a number of videos every week, they all tie into the daily video. And you'll have to excuse my voice. I seem to be picking up a bit of a bug right now. So I'm kind of going with that Joe Cocker type sound. <clears throat> okay, right at the open, we had a flat to slightly higher open. But then right after that, prices declined down below the daily pivot at 59.85. And we got down to the unchanged level and we found support after going negative <clears throat> at 59.75. Then we rebounded back to the unchanged level, got above that, got above the daily pivot. We got above 6,000 again. But then we hit resistance just a little bit below R1 at 6,009. Then we went back down. Prices declined to the daily pivot, the unchanged level. And we attempted to bounce up, but hit resistance now at 6,000 again. That's a nice round number. And then we closed almost unchanged on the day. We were up 0.02%. So as I say, it goes in the books as an up day, but we're not seeing an awful lot of conviction right now. <clears throat> and we were below average with volume, which is kind of strange. And we are still positive in the short, intermediate, and long term, as I said, as measured by the moving averages. Inflation came in as expected. I'll go through some of the charts there. Interest rates are going back up, and that's putting some pressure on stocks. We're also seeing the dollar up into the 106 range, and that could be pressuring stocks as well. Keeping an eye on the geopolitical events, just in case they have an impact on the market. And things seem relatively calm after the U.S. election, I mean, there's all the blame game and my guy lost, so the other side, or my person lost, I should say. The other side's evil, and the other side's saying, my side won, the other side's evil, you know, that. but that always happens. I'm talking about things that could have an impact on the market in the uh, unrest or things that may end up happening. Okay, some comments. The semiconductors, that's really what dragged things down. They underperformed on Wednesday. We're watching the Middle East. Oil's not really moving all that much. We're at six, the 68 range right now. And we still have kind of a long list. The VIX is still giving us an extreme reading when we use an RSI 9 based on that. This is the third day now that this has been happening. The Stoke RSI Williams percent are. Notice the CCI 14 has dropped off the list. The CCI 20 is still on the list. The stochastics were still kind of far away from that 20 period moving average. 
and the RSI short term based on nine periods. That was on the list, fell off the list. Now it's back on the list again. Intermediate term, we have the CMB composite, the Sean trend meter, and the boom indicators showing that we're getting kind of far away from the 50-period moving average. But these indicators are coming down. They're not extreme, as extreme as they were, but they're still extreme. And then long term, we're still looking either overbought or good solid momentum with the 150 and 200-day simple moving averages. No change to the scenario. It appears that the soft landing is still in place and that the Fed is still likely to cut at the next meeting another 25 basis points there. The dollar was up and interest rates were up. This could have put some pressure on stocks. We're at 4.45% with the 10-year yield where we had been at 4.43%. And we're getting close, but we're still inverted with the 10 to the three month. We're still uninverted with the 10 to the two year. Sentiment didn't change. We came in at 68 yesterday. We came in at 68 again today. We are still positive with our trend. The ADX is still above its moving average. So that shows a strengthening trend in the green line, even though it's coming down, which is a little bit of a concern, but it's on top. So we still default to positive. I'm still keeping the bias at mixed, which is very strange. Usually the bias, that's if we have an up day or down day, we had small losses, small gains. There's just not a lot of conviction right now. I'm still keeping the momentum at positive because we're above all the moving averages. And for the most part, the last two, three, four, five days taken together have been positive. The economic reports that came out, this is one of the bigger days as far as what was released. We had the weekly MBA mortgage applications index. It was up half a percent. Last week, it was down 10.8%. And we keep an eye on that just because that gives us some kind of a gauge as what's happening in the real estate area. CPI came in as expected, up 0.2%, which is also what we saw last time. Core CPI, this is the inflation component. It came in as expected, up 0.3%, the same as what we saw last time. The Treasury budget, this is big. I mean, we were minus... 257.4 billion, where you look back a year ago and we were down 66.6 .6 billion. A lot more spending going on with the government these days. So here's a chart of the CPI year over year where the blue line, we're starting to turn back up a little bit. And that's a little bit of a concern to the markets, but we rarely just go straight down or straight up. We tend to chop around. And the market kind of got used to this idea of, of inflation just falling down. But, well, we've slowed down that decline on a year-over-year -year basis. And we're going back up to slightly flat with the core CPI. That's the inflation component. CPI services and commodities year-over-year. -year. Blue line did tick up just a little bit here. And we're actually negative when we look at the core commodities. And commodities have been getting hit a little bit. We watch those. And I go over those in the intermarket analysis video on the weekend. And they're showing some weakness right now, which is more deflationary. Then we look at, this is just what we look at on a year-over-year -year basis with the CPI here, where we're starting to go back up a little bit when we look at the 12-month rate of change. And we're going back up on the month-over-month -month change. Now, this is the headline number where we're still pretty much flat year over year, going back on the rate of change 12 months, and we're actually declining a little bit when we look at the rate of change going back to the previous month. Mortgage applications. After being negative for pretty much all of September, we finally saw them positive. So even though it wasn't a really solid number, it is positive where all the other numbers have been negative. As interest rates for a while there, we're starting to come back down. We'll have to see what it does to next week's reading. And then the federal budget, we always get a negative number here, where when this is going down, that just means more and more is being spent. All right, Isabel Net blog charts. This is put out by Real Investment Advice. This says earnings growth trend intact. This is very long term, going all the way back to 1936 here. And we're actually above the upper end of the trend channel and estimates through 2025. And this is ultimately what drives stock prices in the longer term. And so this is still looking pretty healthy. And then you can read through all of this, depending on if you're into history or not. But this basically just says 
with um, President Biden, the stock market did really well. And um, the Dow and the S&P return was 76%. Of course, the first time Trump was president, we were up 57 and a half. Nothing to sneeze at there. All really good returns. Of course, we don't really know what's going to happen going forward. There is some talk, pure speculation at this point, that with the changes that are taking place, that some of these government reports may end up being revised and they might be weaker than expected. And that could, there are people saying, we're, we're excuse me, <clears throat> we are already in a recession. Now it's just that the number, numbers that were given don't necessarily reflect that. Well, if there's more recession, and of course Trump will get blamed for it, even though there's a real lag time from the previous administration until they actually come out. But that's not how people tend to think this through. So we'll have to see. It, it, are we going to see some weakening and revisions to the previous government reports that might suggest the economy was not as strong as expected? And if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, I, I constantly point this out. There's a real disconnect between Wall Street's economy and that's why we're hitting all <clears throat> all time highs with with the different indexes and then real life economy where when you go to the store, when you get gas, when you pay your bills, it's like you see the inflation there. But the stock market doesn't seem to be really seeing the inflation and the two are not really connected to each other. OK, then country composition. This is the MSCI World Index here where the U.S. is two thirds of that when it's all taken together. Schiller, and I go over this also in the intermarket analysis video. This is also called CAPE, C-A-P-E. You also may see it referred to as PE10 because it's a more smooth approach. It's coming up to highest ever and it was in 2000 and it's the third highest as we approach 2025. And But we've been watching this and I go over this every week in the intermarket analysis video and these numbers have been high. They're almost double what the median and the mean are. I don't use this as a, a timing mechanism or really to make decisions. It's more just for informational purposes. But yeah, we're, we're overvalued even looking forward. Now, the Schiller P.E. ratio looks back on earnings that have already been released. Then we also look at forward P.E. ratios. And even looking on that, with with that perspective, we are overvalued. So if you look historically or even going forward, the market is expensive, but it's been expensive for quite a while. Then stocks and profit expectations are both near record highs, just showing how things are doing quite well. This is a, a Bloomberg chart here. And profits, that's you know the, the amount that a company can keep. And then you have the, the blended forward earnings per share coming down a little bit here, but still looking pretty positive overall. And risk appetite indicator going up as folks are willing to jump back more into the risk on type of things like stocks. And S&P 500 scales record high after Trump went. Well, we've already known that. This chart's a bit out of date right now. We're now dealing with the 6,000 level with the S&P. And then this is what has been performing the best based on the U.S. dollar and their real returns, which takes inflation into account. And not any real surprise. Stocks usually come in first. Now, stocks really go up and show good returns. They get hit pretty hard during difficult times, but over the long term, they tend to perform quite well when you compare them to other assets here. Cyclicals outperform ex or performance accelerated post-election, and we've been seeing that. There's a lot of talk of cutting in the government, which could save money. There are a lot of uh, regulations that may be done away with. And just a new approach to how the economy is handled. And so the market likes that. And it looks like that the economy could look solid going forward from here. And this is what cyclicals do. They 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 cycle with the with, with what the economy is doing. So when the economy is doing well, cyclicals do well. When the economy is under pressure, cyclicals are under pressure as well. And we've seen a real move up since the election. I looked at Twitter, but 
nothing really of interest that I found there. Yardini, not really. He talked about CPI um, in his latest post there, but it's not anything that we haven't already talked about here. Okay, looking at the intraday chart, where we did have a little bit higher of an open, but then we quickly found, fell down below the daily pivot. We found, we dropped down below it, but we found some support here at the 59.75 level. And then it looked like, okay, we, we got the, the open out of the way here. There was some selling that came in, and now we look really solid. We came back above the unchanged level, above the daily pivot, and this looked like a pretty solid move. We didn't quite get up to R1 here, but then we topped out, kind of exhausted itself again. Then we saw a pullback all the way down to the daily pivot and unchanged level, tried to bounce up, but now 6,000 was acting as overhead resistance. And then we saw some selling going into the close, which pretty much made it virtually an unchanged day. And here is the intraday chart here, where we were looking a little more negative before the market opened, but then things started to improve and then here's the intraday action not really seeing much of a change now we're going to have ppi coming out in thursday session probably not as influential as cpi but you never know i mean cpi came out and the market was like okay let's do nothing but in ppi there was a time i think a month or a few months ago when it looked like okay ppi came in very friendly and the market just took off to the upside <clears throat> and then on friday we're going to get retail sales which is such a huge part of the u.s economy this is still looking positive we still see the blue line above the red line and both are going up when we look at large cap growth versus large cap value intraday and this is still looking pretty good here we, if you go all the way back to halloween we're still in an overall uptrend here on the intraday chart when we look at s p growth to value and do a ratio. Even though we ended up closing down, we, we take this in the context of what is it doing overall. So we were down with growth where value was up with the large caps, and we were down more with the mid caps and down less with the small caps. So we look at the small caps, a little bit of a tick here, but we have been seeing an improvement overall, but the small cap growth to value ratio is still in a downtrend. Also a little bit of a tick down, with mid-cap growth to value, but we are seeing some improvement, but longer term, it's still in a downtrend. And a little bit of a move down here with S&P growth to value, but overall, it's still in an uptrend. So large cap growth is still one of the stronger areas. We're just not seeing an awful lot of follow through right now. And a little bit of a decline here, but we're still up outside of the rainbow when we compare the growth to value ETF. Discretionary to staples. Coming down a little bit, but still, it has been one of the better performing ratios that we've seen. Discretionary, that's more positive for the market. And this includes Tesla and Amazon in here. And if those companies are doing well, this ratio is typically doing well. Where we're seeing discretionary by itself, not really breaking out right now, but we're seeing a little bit of weakness in staples, which is helping this ratio hold up for the time being. So looking at the condition of our trend, the ADX, it's still going up. It's still above the moving average. That suggests a strengthening trend. We are trending because we're above this blue line, which is a static number of 20. But the green line's coming down. But on Wednesday, the red line also went down. So we're just this is showing more of a lack of conviction right now. Short term, rolling over a little bit, but still above the moving average as we see both the green line coming down and the red line coming down, but the green line's on top, so we are still positive. And we did drop to below average here with volume, which is strange. This is CPI. It's one of the biggest reports, but... Mm -hmm. Okay, we did get the latest reading from Investors Intelligence coming in at 2.91. That's still below this three level. So for how we use this chart, it's more neutral. The VIX continues to fall. And that's more positive for stocks anyway, both here with the line chart and the bar chart. And But the VIX of the VIX is actually going up just a little bit here with the bar chart and the line chart. They usually move together. We saw a little bit of a disconnect there on Wednesday. The momentum of the VIX continues to be down as stocks have been going up. And we're still getting an extreme reading with the VIX when measured with an RSI 9 period here. We're getting an extreme negative reading still meaning that the VIX has come down pretty far, pretty fast. And we're down to the 14 level now. 
that's a much more manageable, where right before the election, we were well over 20. And here's the seasonal pattern here, where we could be coming down still with the VIX, and that's typically what happens after the election, which is more positive for stocks. But then we saw kind of a, a contradiction here. This fear gauge really went up, or the other fear gauge went down. So not a lot of conviction there either. This is a concern, though. The chicken money flow, a smart money indicator, which takes price and volume into account, still negative, still chopping sideways. We want this to go up and see the red line going up as well. And it's just not doing that right now. And that's a warning sign to us. Also, after going up and getting above the midpoint, we're starting to roll over with the chicken oscillator. When we came down right before the election and we were hitting more of these low points right here, this started to go up before the S&P actually went up. Now, it'd be nice if it worked that way all the time, but it doesn't. It's just this time it happened to work out that way. But we are rolling over a little bit here. We're positive with the chicken oscillator, but showing some weakness. The vortex is positive because the green line's above the red line, but the green line's coming down. However, the red line continues to go down as well. We went up with the equity put call ratio daily chart, but we're still going down with the five day and we're getting that extreme reading. And here's a longer term look just to give you some historical context when we get to very low readings. It could still go quite a bit lower than where we're at now, but when we drop below this level, a lot of times that may mark a top in the market, but not always. We're still declining with the 10 day average of the equity put call ratio as well, and that's positive. And we're still seeing a real drop off in the volatility risk premium as we're below the band here. And we've been pretty much going sideways here and not really seeing much of an improvement with the advanced decline line based on price, even though in the bigger picture we're positive. We were pretty much flat based on volume as well. And that's positive since it's above the advancing moving average. And we're seeing a lot more new highs than new lows, but a real contraction of the new highs, a little bit of an expansion of the new lows. So our five-day is continuing to go down, but our 10-day is continuing to go up. <clears throat> we did decline with the advanced decline ratio, but we're still above zero. And we're just a little bit above the moving average with accumulation distribution. This is another smart money indicator. And if, as long as this stays above the red line, the moving average, then we are positive. I would ignore this indicator for right now. This tries to measure how far away we are from the moving average. And you can see we're right almost on top of it. And this is just a modified MACD that I've tried to simulate measuring the distance from the moving average. Saw a little bit more of a decline with the NYSE advanced decline line than what we're seeing right now as far as price for the S&P. So a little bit of a downtick here when we look at the cumulative Advanced decline line based on price for the S&P, as well as volume. Nothing really earth-shattering yet, but we're not seeing any more follow-through strength. If you compare price, we have not exceeded this previous high, where we're still above that previous high based on volume, and that could be positive. We declined, but still above the moving average with the cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE. Also still above the moving average with our regular advanced decline line for the NYSE. This other NYSE advanced decline line, which is calculated in a slightly different way, still above the moving average. We break it out based on common stock on price. We did see a decline. We also saw a decline based on volume. The broader market was a little bit weaker, even though semiconductors were also weak. So we're seeing a little bit of weakness with our advanced decline line studies, but we're still above the moving average with the NYSE common stock, the S&P, the mid caps, and the small caps. When we look at those stocks inside the S&P above their 20 period moving averages, we're pretty much flat, but we're positive since we're above 50. A little bit of a tick up with those stocks above their 50 day moving average, also positive because we're above 50. A little bit of a tick up with the 100 period moving average study, but we're declining with the 200 period moving average study. And here's where we see volume was just slightly below average here. And we've just been chopping sideways. Now, you notice this dashed line here. That's a previous pivot point. And so far, this has been providing a level of support. We'll be watching that if we see more weakness, if we end up closing down below it. But for right now, support is holding, which is more positive. 
So we were pretty much flat with the 20, 50, and 200-day moving averages, but they're, they're still holding up. They're still giving pretty positive readings taken together. And we're still extreme positive with the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R. The CCI 14 has actually dropped from being extreme positive, but the CCI 20, even though it's coming down, is still extreme positive. The stochastics are extreme on all different time frames. The short, short term, intermediate short term, and now long short term. The force index, no longer extreme, coming down, but still positive. And the condition of the short term trend is measured by 20 periods. Even though we're chopping sideways right now, we're still above both lines and both lines are going up. And we're above the simple and exponential moving averages with the blue line crossing above the red. The blue line is an exponential moving average and it moves faster. So that's still looking pretty solid there. And we're no longer extreme with the standard deviations chart. We spent a few days up here in the plus three channel. We're right now in the border between the plus two and plus three. So that's no longer extreme positive there. The balance of power just barely above zero, but it's still positive. And the CMB composite continues to go up. It hasn't, it came down, but now it's starting to go back up. And we use this like an oscillator showing that we're extreme or overbought here. The condition of the 50 period moving average still above the red line and the blue line, even though we're, we're going sideways with the red line above the blue line, that's still looking pretty solid. The no go, go, no go is still dark blue. That's still positive there. We're not too far off of the highest high value, and the midpoint continues to go up. That's positive. And the TTM squeeze is still improving here, so that's positive as well. And then the standard deviation, this measures speed over the last 10 periods, and it's really picking up the big gap that we saw. That's why we're getting such a high reading here. It's still positive with the ease of movement, and we're no longer extreme with the Arun indicator, but we're still positive since we're above zero. We're negative here, and this is another warning sign. The McClellan oscillator for the S&P continues to be below zero, so we're starting to turn back down with the summation index based on price and volume, and that's a concern. And we're below zero with the NYSE McClellan oscillator, so the summation index is starting to turn down based on price and volume for the NYSE. Still positive, but showing some weakness with the Swinland Trading Oscillator based on price and volume, but momentum is still positive. We're looking positive here with the PMO. We're above the moving average based on price. We're just stalling out at the moving average based on volume. So not really falling apart, but not showing any strength with the PMOs that are rising. The buy signals are still going up, and we're flat to slightly going up with the PMOs above zero. We've gone from being positive to neutral with the Elder's Impulse system for the S&P. We're still positive with the parabolic SAR with the dots underneath. Momentum in the short term continues to be positive. Momentum in the short to intermediate term with the MACD it continues to be positive. So we are improving and we're actually crossing above the moving average with the TRIX, which is a long-term oscillator. We're coming right back up to the moving average with the KST, the other long-term oscillator that we look at. The Copic Curve, another momentum oscillator, continues to be positive. Kind of flat after being extreme positive with the Sean Trend Meter, but still looking good here, but no longer extreme positive. We're above 50 with the Money Flow. We're above 50 with the Ultimate Oscillator. We're above the moving average with On Balance Volume. The RSI 14, still above 50, even though it's kind of drifting right now. And we're just barely extreme positive with the short-term RSI based on nine periods. Above all the plotted moving averages here, and all the lines are going up, that's positive. We're still kind of far away from the 20-period moving average and the 50-period moving average. So it's positive, but we use this like an oscillator, because once it gets too far away from one of those moving averages, it has a tendency to come back, or at least give the moving average a chance to catch up. The bullish percent index, it had been going back up. Now it's starting to tick down. Now we're positive since we're above 50. But the fact that we've declined here for the last couple of days is a bit of a warning sign to us. Coming down a little bit, but not really moving with the NYSE bullish percent index. And after being extreme positive, we continue to decline with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. And really no support or resistance right now, unless we see more declines. There's Other than pivot points looking out into the future, we don't really have any resistance. But... If we fall, then we'll be looking at support levels. 
so still looking okay here, but the candles are getting a lot smaller with the hike in ASHI. And we're positive, but pointing down with the KE chart. We're still positive with the Ranko chart and also positive with the three-line break. Long-term, still looking okay with the 150 and 200 period moving averages. Usually when we get above these red lines, that's when we get concerned. But you can see we spent most of 2024 above those red lines, which shows good long-term momentum. And this is a bit of a change here. And I usually only cover this in the weekly video, but this was a change. This is called the Zahorchak method. It's very long-term buyer sell signals. For most of 2024, we've been pegged up at 10. Well, right before the election, we saw some weakness in the market and we came down to eight. And after the election, we went back up to 10. Well, after Wednesday's action, we're back down to eight. Now, this is still positive, but the fact that this actually declined is a little bit of a concern. Still positive across the board with the Keller market model on all time frames with all indexes. Negative across the board with commodities. Bonds are still negative in the short and intermediate term. The dollar is in an uptrend in the short and intermediate term. Then we saw utilities, healthcare, and then tech. But you can see the percentage changes weren't all that much. We had discretionary actually leading things higher, and that's what we like to see. That's positive. Staples were up a little bit. That tends to be more defensive. And communication, we want that to do better. It was up, but just barely. And so we're seeing a little bit of a Christmas tree here. The Dow getting above 44,000, then a drop below 44,000. Where we have the S&P getting above 6,000. Canada, that's TSX, has been doing rather well. Communication did set a new four-year high after seeing a bullish MACD crossover with Staples. And uh, the dollar setting a 52-week high. The NASDAQ getting above 19.3. Energy, after seeing some weakness, is now seeing a bullish 50-20 crossover. That's what we call a golden cross. And not really seeing anything all that drastic right now between the weighted version of the S&P 500 and the equal weight version, which is the red line. The Dow still holding on to support here. Even though we dropped a little bit below it, we were able to close above that R2 pivot point. And we're still neutral with the diamonds, with the Elder's Impulse system. Still hanging on to support here with the NASDAQ. So we're wondering, is this kind of like a little rest spot here before we get set to go higher? Or are we just kind of biding some time before we get set to go lower? And still holding on to support here with the NASDAQ 100. But we continue to be neutral with the NASDAQ 100 when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. Momentum is still positive for the NASDAQ 100. And, of course, we saw small caps really going up, and now they're giving back some of those gains. And they're still neutral when looking at the Elder's Impulse system for the small caps. Looking at the Russell 2000 small caps coming down after getting extreme with the RSI. The momentum is still positive, though, with this index. Mid caps coming down, but still above this R2 pivot level. Still neutral with the mid caps with the Elder's Impulse system. The Wilshire just kind of going sideways right now, a broad market measure, as is the total U.S. stock ETF. Financial sector up slightly, just coming off of a recent all-time high. Keeping an eye on this, this is the relationship between the S&P 500 and the Home Builders ETF. It is continuing to come down, but we have not dropped below the midpoint at least yet. This would produce what we consider to be a negative divergence if it continues to fall below the midpoint. The FANG index looking pretty good, up 0.05% here, but closing well off of its high. And we're still below this short-term trend line. We got a little bit above it, but we were not able to close above that with the FANG index. Apple was up 0.4%, still just about at its 50-day moving average. Amazon up 2.48%, setting an all-time high. And that's what helped discretionary. Microsoft still hanging out above the 50 and 200 day moving averages. We still have yet to see a death cross here. And Google was down 1.5%. Meta was down 0.82%, but still above its 50 day moving average. NVIDIA down 1.3%. This is why the we gave a lot of the gains back with the S&P. We saw more weakness in these big stocks. Tesla was up half a percent. It really shot up. Then it saw some profit taking. It was able to bounce up a little bit on Wednesday. 
Netflix setting another new all-time high. And then looking at the world stocks versus the U.S. stocks is still seeing the short-term and long-term correlation weak. And you can see the red line, which is the S&P. That's been doing better as world stocks have actually been underperforming. And that's why we're seeing this relationship weaken here. Oil, not really moving all that much in the $68 range. I wanted to show this, and I usually only show this over the weekend. We would like this to do better, but when we look at a ratio between the semiconductors and the Dow, this coming down is a little bit of a concern. Now, we've been at these levels before, and we've been able to bounce back up from here, but this is one of the things that we'll be watching. If this really continues to fall, and think of the logic behind this. Semiconductors, growth, and a huge part of tech. If this ratio is going down, that means the semiconductors are underperforming the Dow, the 30 stocks that are considered to be the, the highest quality of stocks. And that just means the market could be getting more defensive. So we just want to watch this ratio. The dollar just screaming up into the 106 range now. And we're going back up with the 10-year yield. We're going down with the 10-year based on price. Not much of a change, if, but if you look here, the bar was pretty stinking wide. But from close to close, it wasn't all that much. And then the growth to value ratio still holding out above the moving average with the Qs to S&P. Discretionary, this is one of the stronger areas now. And we're still above the moving average with large cap growth versus large cap value. The large caps, mid caps, and small caps, even though we ticked down with the small caps, are still looking solid here. The S&P to utilities ratio, if this goes up, that means the S&P is outperforming utilities. But longer term, we still have been declining overall. And we're ticking back up a little bit here with staples to S&P. But overall, we have been declining, which is more positive. So what's our outlook for Thursday? We're still positive for right now. And we're coming into a longer period of time that has positive seasonality. We're still looking a little overbought in the short term. We haven't really worked off much of that. And we're wondering, is the market just exhausted right now? To have CPI come out and the market on a closing basis just be virtually unchanged? You'd think that there would be a little more conviction there. We're going to get weekly jobless claims and PPI in Thursday's session. Both of those are pretty influential. And then we want to keep an eye on all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And then if anything happens in the U.S. in response to the election, which so far doesn't seem to have really happened. And then Friday, we're going to get retail sales as well as industrial production and capacity utilization. Here's a look at Thursday's calendar and what the previous readings were. Seasonality, we're neutral to negative with the Dow and S&P, and we're flat out negative with the NASDAQ. And we are dealing with options expiration week, where we tend to be up a little bit more than down. And here is a look at the chart. Now, the green dashed line, that's during an election year. We do see some positive seasonality that way. But when you look at the solid green line, it tends to be a little bit more negative here. So we're just kind of chopping around a little bit. Thursday is one of the better days when you compare it to 2023, and it is the second most positive day when you compare it to what's happened so far in 2024. And then here we go. We're coming back into this positive time now, according to Tom Bally's research. And just one more day to show on this chart. This shows the buyback blackout period. So when companies are reporting earnings, they can't go in and buy their own stock. That's starting to become less and less relevant as we're working our way to the end of earnings season. But here's the Carson chart showing positive seasonality going forward from here. Also looking forward seasonally after the election. And then this is how things were back in 2020 after the election. So what are the warning signs? We do have this Hindenburg Omen that's in the background, but we haven't seen any more confirmations. And it is confirmed. We saw the initial signal and then a secondary signal after that, but that's been quite a while now. We are negative with the S&P McClellan and NYSE McClellan oscillators and summation indexes, and that's one of the bigger flags that we're seeing currently, as well as the chicken money flow. But then on the positive side, I like to keep the smart money indicators together. So I still have the chicken money flow over here, but it's, it's not showing any strength. It's just kind of chopping along and slightly negative where accumulation distribution is right above its moving average. 
The chicken oscillator is positive, but now it's rolling over a little bit. So we have the vortex, though. It's still positive. Still looking good when we look at large cap growth to value and discretionary to staples. It's still looking pretty solid there. The 5 and 10-day equity put call ratio charts continue to go down. The advanced decline lines, we're, even though we're seeing a little bit of weakness, we're still above the moving averages. Our 20, 50, 100, and 200 period moving average studies are still looking positive there. The parabolic SCR, Swinland Trading Oscillator, the bullish percent indexes for the S&P, NASDAQ, and NYSE are still positive, even though they've been declining lately. And momentum is still looking positive. The ease of movement, money flow, and ultimate oscillator continue to be above their midpoint. So they are positive. The financial sector is positive, And the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is positive. So our conclusion, we're still positive. We're still in a period of positive seasonality. We're wondering if we're overbought in the short term or just flat out exhausted as we've been chopping sideways recently. In the short term, this is where we are kind of focusing on the idea that maybe we're exhausted. Now, we could get unexhausted at any time and the market could break up or break down. It just, it seems to lack conviction right now. We're still positive and looking a little bit overbought in the intermediate term. We continue to be positive in the long term. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. Have a really good day and I will talk to you in the next video.